Dungeons and Dragons Online is set in the Eberron campaign setting, which is the newest campaign setting for D&D. In addition to all the standard European medieval fantasy tropes that are common to Dungeons and Dragons, Eberron also offers some steampunk elements. So I think it was wise for Turbine to choose Eberron as the location for the online game. This is because other than Ravenloft, Eberron has the most mass commercial appeal right now. D&D Online is notable in that, unlike many other popular massively multiplayer online RPGs that are basically a heavily watered down version of D&D's rule set, D&D Online actually uses the Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition rules, in many cases almost straight out of the book. What surprises me the most about this design is how the skill system has been integrated with the encounter design. For example, your spot skill allows you to automatically see the outlines of hidden enemies if you have enough levels in it to counter an enemy's sneak level. And you can also use Investigate to reveal hidden traps and doors. There are also dialogue trees for certain NPCs that allow you to use different skills, such as Diplomacy and Intimidate, in order to get them to join you or give you information. Now, unlike the tabletop version of the game, D&D Online uses a real-time battle system, transforming the game into an action RPG. The tabletop version of D&D has always been a turn-based game, so this change is quite notable but not uncommon. For the past two decades, almost every video game based on D&D has altered the rules to make it work as an action RPG. What is notable is how the designers handled the once-a-day powers. Normally, in 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons, you have abilities that can only be used a certain number of times per day. In Dungeons and Dragons Online, you can recharge these abilities by resting at a shrine, and one can always be found inside of a dungeon. Another aspect that has been dropped is the Vanshian magic system. That is to say, the need to rememorize a spell after you've cast it because your character literally forgets the spell once it has been used. This system is not used in Dungeons and Dragons Online. Instead, spellcasters use a spell point system from the alternate rule set of the Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 system reference documents. I think this change is good, as the Vanshian magic system just doesn't work very well in a fast-paced action RPG, but I do find it odd the developers didn't add some kind of point system for the once-a-day use feats. Needing to run around to find a shrine to rest at in order to recharge your power slows down gameplay, and does discourage you from using your special abilities during combat, as it can be hard to know when to save them and when to burn them. For a melee class, it makes combat mostly about holding down the attack key as you chase down enemies, and after a few hours of auto-swinging, I got very bored of the system. I think there should be more attacks you can do, especially at the earlier levels where a character's attention span needs to be kept. Another thing that stands out in the design is that enemies rarely drop loot, and when they do the drops are quest items that can be exchanged with other NPCs for better items. I imagine this was done to allow dungeons to be ran faster and keep with the action RPG theme, but unfortunately the speed is compromised by the need to bust up crates and jars to find money and potions. I sincerely believe the level designers have an unhealthy obsession with breakable crates, and if I was going to change any aspect of D&D Online's design, I would dramatically reduce the number of these that spawn and make potions and money easier obtained in other ways, such as some kind of auto-looting of NPCs after you've killed them. Back on the subject of a 3rd edition rule set, there is another drawback to the game trying to be so faithful to the tabletop version. D&D Online has more crunch for the newbie to learn than the average massively multiplayer online RPG demands. This is problematic because it is very easy to totally screw up your character and make one who sucks hard in combat. I will point out that the developers have tried to account for this problem by letting you choose from predetermined character builds, so you don't have to decide how to spend your skill points and which feats to buy. But still, if you've never played Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition before, you're probably going to feel overwhelmed by all the choices. I will admit this is a problem with the design of 3rd Edition D&D and not Turbine's developers. Turbine has actually done a pretty excellent job of designing character kits for you to choose from that lessen the learning curve. But the learning curve is going to be there because many MMO players just aren't used to making tabletop RPG characters. Another difficult design area is in the character level pacing. In the core rules, D&D characters tend to cap out at level 20. So in Dungeons & Dragons Online, the highest level you can obtain is 20. This means leveling is much slower than in other games, and the majority of your character's improvements are going to come from clearing dungeons to earn better items and action points to spend on minor character upgrades. I think this was a novel way to handle the issue of how to reward grinding, but I don't think this is going to be enough reward for the majority of gamers out there who really want to see a golden aura flow around their character every couple hours of play so they know they're getting stronger. Also, the overwhelming majority of items to be gained from quests are worthless to your character because they are randomly generated, meaning you need to spend time on the auction house to best upgrade your character. This is unfortunate because I know for a fact that the game can be scripted to ensure only loot your character can actually use will appear in lists. It's a simple matter of having the game search through your feat list and spawn items based on your weapon and armor proficiencies. 
They could also take it one step further and have the game check what equipment your character is wearing and only generate items of a comparable or slightly better utility. I'm very confused about why the developers have not done something this obvious. It would make the pacing of the game much smoother and reduce the auction house downtime. I imagine there are some player economy issues involved in doing this, but I think making the game better paced trumps any benefit from encouraging players to engage in a virtual stock market. Virtual economies are not that fun for the average gamer, and what is fun is running dungeons. That's why auction house systems were invented to begin with. Now on the subject of PvP, there are a few events you can engage in, but there are no PvP rewards so players have no incentive to engage in those events. I find this to be a hugely problematic area, because it reduces the audience the game can have. Let it be known, PvP in massively multiplayer online RPGs is like football. Almost everyone likes football, either to play it themselves or to watch others who play it. If you don't have outstanding PvP content in your game, then you aren't trying as hard as you can to make your game successful. Turbine really needs to work on this. In summary, I have to admit, even though some changes have been made to allow the game to work as an action RPG, this does feel like you're playing Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, especially as you listen to the Dungeon Master narration and the heavy emphasis on puzzle solving. Overall, I did enjoy the gameplay experience. If you're looking for a World of Warcraft alternative and don't really care about PvP, you may enjoy Dungeons & Dragons Online. I rate it as a pretty good game.